Good morning to all. Uh, thank you for joining us. Welcome to New Life Community Church Logan Square online. Um, these are trying times. But we're very happy to, to have you here with us. Uh, we're in this together. So please join us in worship. Just like my wife said, we're in this together. So let's finish this together. So we have this great opportunity right now to worship the Lord, even from a distance, but yet we're still one family. We're still one body in love with Jesus. So we have this great opportunity for you to worship right now and be able to send out your, your messages, send out your chats, send out your prayers, send out your requests. It's just This is a great opportunity for you to even yearn for Jesus and, and call him out right now. We have this chat that you can join either on YouTube or on Facebook. We have all these other links that you can do, the connect card. We also have that online giving so you can give your tithes, so you can still remain faithful with the Lord. So we welcome you again. And let's just enjoy this Palm Sunday with the fabulous message and this worship we're about to begin. Good morning. I am so glad, I really am, that you guys are hanging out uh, with me today. Um, this week, whew, this week for me was uh, like Groundhog's Day. Remember the movie Groundhog's Day? It's like uh, one day just kind of went into the next day and there was, uh, um, you know, it was just another day wondering, so what changed today, or what new thing are we having today? And so until later in the week, I, I was diving into uh, the scriptures for today, and, and I found this passage of scripture in, in symbolic, symbolically what today is representing, which is Palm Sunday. It probably pretty much, I, 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 I thank God, it, it pretty much broke the monotony of my week. Looking forward to spending time with you to lead you into this passage of Scripture. So I'd like for us to be able to take a moment and let's pray before we keep on going. So wherever you're at, just bow your heads with me and let's talk to God. Yahweh God, I thank you that you have brought us together today to spend time with you, to listen to you, to breathe, to relax for the next 35, 40 minutes. We will be encouraged, edified, built up, informed, challenged, and encouraged in you. Lord, we kneel before you and we ask you speak for your children are listening. We're listening, Lord. <laughs> We're listening, Lord. We realize, Jesus, that without you we can do nothing, we can be nothing. It doesn't matter how hard we work and, and, and toil. We're learning more and more that without you we are nothing. But I thank you that in you, we have everything that we need. So speak, Father, for your servants are listening. I pray this in the magnificent and breathtaking, powerful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, let's dive in. I'm ready. Today is Palm Sunday. It's the, the Sunday, in my opinion, that, that pretty much it revolutionized the world. Today is the day when, when God had put this whole plan together to be able to reach you and I so that we can be intimately connected to him. Today is the day that changed everything. It, it's almost like Jesus came or God came un, under the radar in order to be able to impact us. 
through this one day that started the rest of the week, Holy Week, to lead us to Friday in order to get us to Sunday. So that today, so that today we can be with him. So let's dive into the scriptures. I am so excited about this story that will help us understand how amazing God is. I want you to go with me to the, to the gospel of Matthew. The gospel of Matthew chapter 21. We're going to read verses 1 through 11. All right, I'm going to give you just a, a couple of moments. Go ahead. Turn on your Bible or actually get a Bible uh, a physical Bible, and go with me to Matthew chapter 21. That's Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. I'll give you just a moment uh, to go ahead and do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to share with you today, enlighten you today with some great truths that I, I can guarantee you will change your life. Matthew chapter 21, let's dive in. I'm reading from the New Living Translations, by the way. As Jesus, the Bible says, as Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead. Go into the village over there, he said. As soon as you enter it, you'll see a donkey tied there with its colt beside it, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks, what are you doing? Just say, the Lord needs him, and he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Verse 6. And the two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Verse 8. The most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Verse 9. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people, watch this, and the people all around him were shouting, praise God for the Son of David, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord, praise God. God in the highest heavens. I want you to just, just go with me. Let's go, let's go back 2,000 years ago. Thousands of people watching Jesus on a donkey, on a road, entering into Jerusalem, the holy city, and thousands of them are saying, praise God for the son of David. Praise God. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Man, I wish we would have been there. I wish we would have been there. In order for us to understand the magnitude of what they were saying. However, verse 10, this is really where I want to camp on. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. <laughs> Who is this? They were saying. Thousands of other people in the city of Jerusalem were trying to, were trying to figure out what is the big deal about this one guy riding in a donkey's colt. Who's this? Who is this man? In other translations, says, Who is this man? What's the big deal, in other words? Verse 11. And the crowds replied, It's Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. It's Jesus, the prophet. Now, as I was reading this, I was, I was like, wow, there's two groups of people. People taking care of their own business in the holy city. People doing their own thing. They're, they're about their own life. They're, they're doing their things. They're, 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 they're taking care of business. They're buying and selling. They're visiting. They're doing their religious thing in the city. And here comes this ordinary guy, a guy who came from Nazareth who was in, in Galilee. That's like a nothing city. It's, it's like this little speck on a dot. And they're wondering, so who's this guy? Who's this man? And then there are people in the crowd who are celebrating Jesus now. Now they knew about Jesus. Well, at least they knew about the symbolism of who Jesus is. 
son of David. Let's celebrate the son of David. So the crowd knew nothing about him. Now the, the, the city knew nothing about him, but the crowd knew something about him. But Jesus' actions were trying to tell the people, this is who I am. And that's what I want to study today with you. I don't know where you are. I don't know if you're in the city or if you're in the crowd. But the fact is you're here and you're listening to, to me right now. So God wants to be able to attract you and shake you at your shoulders and let you know, I need you to know who I am. I need you to know who I am. So I want to tell you today who this man Jesus is. What's the big deal? Why is it that the whole world, for the last 2,000 years, have been celebrating Palm Sunday, Holy Week, Good Friday, and Easter. Why is it that last night the Ten Commandments were on? What's the big deal? I'll tell you what the big deal is today. Number one, Jesus Christ, this man who was riding on a donkey's colt coming into Jerusalem, this man, he's the prophet. Now the crowd got that part right. He's a prophet. Pastor Danny, so, so what exactly is a prophet? Well, the, the Bible teaches us in the Old Testament that a prophet is a man who says what God says. He's one who says what God says. Now, pay strict attention. Jesus, the prophet, his responsibility, his job is to say what God says. Well, we, we understand in John chapter 1, verse 1. Go with me there. In the beginning, the word already existed the word was with god and the word was god this man riding on a donkey's colt he is the word and he existed john tells us he existed long before anything else existed he existed he is the word the word was with god and then the yeah and the word was god He's a prophet. He says what God says. He's eternal, and he's the authorized one. I want you to also understand that as a prophet, that, that yes, the crowd got the, 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 the fact that he is a prophet, but one thing they really didn't understand that he is also the word of God. John chapter 1, verse 14. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. So this prophet is the word of God who existed and the authorized one, and all of a sudden now he's fully human. The word became flesh and dwelt among men. The word that, that existed since, since beginning of time, he now became human, born of a virgin Mary, was raised by Joseph and Mary. He grew up as a little boy, grew up into a teenager, and now he's a full-fledged man. Now, check this out. This is what's so exciting. The word of God is now flesh. He's living among us. God is now among us. The word is now among us. Whatever you need to know for your life and for how to live your life and what the pain that's inside of you, the confusion in your mind, the fear that's in your heart. Listen to me. God wants to be able to get a, get a hold of your attention and let you know, listen to me. I'll tell you what you need to know. That's what God is trying to tell you today. He is the word. Jesus is the prophet. But in order for us to get to know God, we must pay attention to the prophet. The prophet. The man from Galilee and Nazareth. Listen to him. He's not just some ordinary prophet from the city. No, 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 no. He's the word of God, the one who says what God says. He is the man who's riding on a donkey's colt into Jerusalem. He is the man who says exactly what God says. He is the man who's God incarnate, God in the flesh. He is the man, the prophet. Did you know that 1,400 years, even before that day came, <laughs> Jesus was predicted. The prophet Moses, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 17 and 18, he explains, Then the Lord said to me, Moses is talking to the Israelites, What they say, what they have said is right. Verse 18. I will raise up a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites. I will put my words in his mouth. Again, this is 
14 centuries before that day when Jesus was riding on a colt into Jerusalem. 1,400 years before that even happened, it was predicted that, that, this, that this man, Jesus, would be raised from among the Israelites and that he would be the prophet who will say what God says. God put the words, and literally God is in the Spirit, inside Jesus' flesh trying to get our attention to pay attention. I am saying what God says. He is the prophet. That's who this man is. If you're wondering who Jesus is, number one, I need you to understand he is what God says. He is the word of God. You can't get God's word from anyone or anything else. It's only Jesus. Only Jesus. He is the absolute word of God. Of God. Understand that. That's the truth. <laughs> I love how God told Moses, I will put my words in his mouth. And he will tell the people everything I command him. Brothers and sisters, that's why it's so important to read the Bible. I tell the congregation, I tell you all the time, y'all need to read your Bible. I think it's good to listen to some preachers online. I think it's good for us to read some books, but there's nothing better than the Bible. The Bible is God's word. Because God told Moses to let us know <laughs> that he will put words inside Jesus' mouth for us to know. In fact, Jesus himself said in John chapter 12, verse 49, Jesus said, I don't speak on my own authority. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. And I, verse 15, and I know his commands lead to eternal life. So I say, I say, look at this, this is what Jesus is saying. I say whatever the Father tells me to say. Jesus is the prophet. Who is this man the city of Jerusalem was saying in an uproar? I'm telling you who the man is. Number one, he's a prophet. He is the one who says what God says. Come on, I know you can say amen to that. You can say amen to that. Number two. The man riding on the donkey, number one, he's a prophet. Number two, he is the king. Come on, say that with me. He is the king. Number one, he's the prophet. Number two, he is the king. Number one, he's the one who says what God says. Number two, he's the king. Do you know what a king is? A king is a ruler. One who establishes a way of living for a kingdom. He is the king. In fact, he is the king of kings. There's no one above him. God sent Jesus to inaugurate or to introduce the kingdom of God on earth. That's why I love the fact when, when the disciples came to Jesus one day and, and, and they saw how Jesus prayed, uh, they came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, will you teach us how to pray? We watch you as you pray, Jesus. Man, the way you pray is so cool. Jesus, will you teach us how to pray? And I love how Jesus said, sure, pray this. When you pray, pray this way. He says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus came as a king to inaugurate the kingdom of God on the earth. Zechariah, let's go a few hundred years before that, that also prophesies Jesus is coming. Look at what the, the, the prophet Zechariah said. Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious. Yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, 
riding on a donkey's colt. Again, this is hundreds of years before this day even happened. And the prophet Zechariah is helping us understand that he is the king. He's inaugurating the kingdom of God, the ways of God, the influence of God. He's trying to help us understand that not only is Jesus the one who says what God says, but Jesus is the one who shows us what it's like to be in God's house, the kingdom of God. Jesus is a ruler. Now, while the crowds may expect that Jesus' aim is to overthrow Roman dominance in Palestine, the gospel of Matthew is trying to help us understand or realize that there is a spiritual rather than a political significance to Jesus riding on a donkey. The city and the crowd thought Jesus was coming to take away the rulership of Rome. But Matthew is like, no, 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 this has nothing to do with Rome or, or any other kingdom. This has everything to do with the kingdom of God coming and being established among those who believe in him. Jesus is a king, a ruler. And the prophet Zechariah says that he's righteous. In other words, that means that he is right in everything that he does. He is righteous and he is victorious. In other words, nothing else can beat him out. His way is the right way. His way is the only way. And we must learn to submit to him as a king and do what he does and say what he says in order for us to live optimally in our lives. Oh, come on. Y'all need to say amen to that. That's a good word. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. The Bible helps us understand that later on, after John the Baptist, when he was arrested, Jesus went into the Galilee where he preached God's good news. Verse 15, the time promised by God has come at last, he announced. The kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. What Jesus is trying to help us understand is now he, the prophet, is here. He's also the king that he is bringing. He is bringing the kingdom of God. He's bringing God's way of life now to us. It has nothing to do really with a, with a, with a dominant city. It has to do with a way of life. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. It has everything to do with a way of life. The way we live our lives is the way we get to, we, the way we get to show what it's like to know God. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent of your sin and turn to God because his kingdom is at hand. And that's good news. Jesus came to introduce God and to introduce his way of living on the earth. That's the man riding on a donkey. That's the man riding on a donkey. You want to know God? <laughs> Look at the man riding on the donkey. That's who that is. You want to know God? Look at the man. Follow the man riding on the donkey as, as he's making his way into Jerusalem, making his way all the way to the cross. That's the man we need to know. Who is this man? He's the prophet. Number two, he is the king. He's the king of all kings. He's the ruler of all rulers. That's the man. <laughs> you know, Jesus' kingdom, God's kingdom, is not of this world. It's not of this world. It has nothing to do with Hollywood or Paris or New York or anything. It has everything to do with God's kingdom, God's way. It's not of this world. Jesus said when he was talking to Pilate in John chapter 18, verse 33, Jesus told Pilate after he had been beaten for hours, Jesus said, my kingdom, my kingdom's not an earthly kingdom. It's not of this world. You and I need to understand that what's going on right now, this too shall pass. But what really is going on right now is a battle for our souls. Who will we place our dependence on? 
We must place our dependence upon the king and follow him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Who is this man? The crowds were saying he is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. That's what they thought. But I'm here to tell you, number one, he's a prophet. Number two, he's a king. And number three, he's a savior. Or we can even use the word he's the priest. He's the prophet, the king, and the priest. The intercessor, the go-between. Without him, we are nothing. Man, that is a daily confession of mine. Let me tell, help you understand a little bit about me. I am nothing without Jesus. He is my Savior. He is my priest. And by next Sunday, then he became my resurrection. Who is this man the people were asking? He's a Savior. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. Jesus told us, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others. And, watch this, to give his life as a ransom for many. He already knew that. He already knew that months before the crucifixion. He already knew, man, I am here to serve you, the kingdom and to die for you in order to bring you into the kingdom, to become a citizen of the kingdom. Not only am I the one who says what you need to know that God says about you, but I'm also the one who helps you to see what it's like to be in my kingdom, but I'm also the one who introduces you or brings you into the kingdom. I am the way. I am the door into God's presence. I'm a savior. Jesus is trying to help us understand. He is a Savior. Come on, say that with me. Jesus is the Savior. That's right. Jesus is the Savior. Who is this man? People are asking me, who is this? I'm here to tell you, he's a Savior. He's the only way to get into heaven. Listen closely to what I'm trying to tell you. He's the only, only absolute way to get into the presence of the one eternal God. There is no other way. Good works aren't going to get you in there. Money's not going to get you in there. Status is not going to get you in there. Pain is not even going to get you in there. Frustration, anger, none of that's going to get you in there. The only way into God's presence is through Jesus, the, the prophet, the king, and the savior. I hope you're listening to me. That's what today is all about. Jesus is trying to help us understand, I introduce you into the kingdom by serving you and I'm prophesying my death. I am your ransom. Jesus says, I am your ransom. Jesus knew he came to die. That's what's so amazing about today, Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday helps us understand Jesus says, I am making my way to Friday. I got to get to Friday. Friday is my destiny. Friday, Good Friday is the day that I'm working towards. All these, the last three years led, is leading me to Friday. I came to die. <laughs> I knew I got to get to the cross. Just get me to the cross. So he sent two disciples on ahead. Get me that donkey. I got to ride that donkey. I got to ride that, that pathway that leads me into Jerusalem. Because once I get to Jerusalem, I, it gets me to Friday to stand before Pilate and say, and say that my kingdom is not of this world so that I can die on a cross. And when I die on the cross, I, I will be raised again on Sunday so that now when you believe in me and trust in me and look to me and lean on me, oh, hallelujah, I will lead you to God your eternal life get me to Friday I'm your savior y'all need to listen to me I know I'm talking to somebody out there one commentator said it so beautifully he says Jesus' immediate purpose is to come into Jerusalem and to die on a cross that's the beauty of of an ugly cross. That Jesus, a wonderful Savior, a perfect, the perfect Lamb of God, became sin 
so that when we believe and fully trust in Christ, we are now, now made right before God. This man, Jesus, is the one designated to take the punishment for all mankind. This one man, Jesus, he's the one that will die to pay for our release from the bondage of sin. This one man, Jesus, is the only one capable of rising from the dead to take the sting of death away from the one who received Jesus as their Savior and makes him their Lord. I'm talking to you that Jesus is not only the word of God for you. Jesus is not only the king and the ruler for your life, but Jesus is also your only savior. He's your only savior. John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus told Mary, you remember that story? Mary and Martha there. Brother Zach, uh, Zac, not Zacchaeus, what's his name? Lazarus. <laughs> Lazarus had died and Jesus showed up. Mary was telling Jesus, Jesus, if you had only been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus says, listen, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection. I'm the one. The word resurrection means to make dead things alive again. I am the resurrection and the life. I'm the one that would ra will raise you from the dead and give you eternal life. In other words, when you place your trust in Jesus, you will never die again. Anyone, Jesus says, anyone who believes in me, believes in me, believes in me, believes in me. And that supersedes mental belief. It's not knowledge, it's conviction. Anyone who has a conviction of who I am, the prophet, the king, and the savior, if you have convictions of who I am, they will live even after dying. Verse 26, everyone who lives in me, lives or dwells or exists in me and believes in me, that person will never die. The sting of death or even the fear of death is gone. Death becomes a transition into eternal life. So who is this? Mary, who is this? Well, I'm the resurrection, Jesus is trying to tell Mary. I love how Jesus closes this little, this little dialogue. He says, Mary, do you believe this? Martha, do you believe this? Lazarus, do you believe this? You, you're watching, do you believe this? Who is this? Well, he's the prophet. He's the one who says what God says. Who is this? Well, he's the king. He came to establish the kingdom of God on the earth. Who is this? Well, he is the Savior and the resurrection from the dead. Our priest, our intercessor, our go-between. Who is this? He's Jesus. It's not religion. He's not religion. No, he's a Savior. He's a way of life. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's a healer. He's a foundation. He's a covering. He's a blessing. He's God's goodness. He's eternal life. The question is, do you believe this? Now, I'm not asking you, do you know about it? See, the crowd that was, that was laying palm trees, uh, branches on the road, the crowd, they were taking their garments off and throwing it on the road. The crowd, they were yelling, at, yelling, screaming, saying good things, but yet six days later, they were cursing him and saying he needs to die. I'm not asking you, do you know about it? I'm asking you to believe it. Will you be willing to place full and total and complete trust in this man? The man riding on a donkey's colt. I hope so. I hope you do. One of the things about this whole coronavirus thing, this COVID-19, one of the things I think that we as a, as a world is learning is that we are all mortal. We're not in control. 
We're trying to get control, but we're not. I was watching a, uh, the news last night and just watching the one sister whose brother died. And he was a pastor. He passed away because he got infected. Even good people, people who do nice things, good or bad, it doesn't matter. This virus doesn't care who you are. But God does. Will you place your trust in him? Will you place your trust in him? If you do, I'd like for you to do me a favor. I'd like for you to say a simple prayer with me. Right where you are, you might be by yourself or you might be with a couple of people. But while you're paying attention to me, I believe right now, I think I can be as bold as to say that uh, God, through his son, Jesus Christ, through this simple medium of Facebook or YouTube, is trying to get your attention to say, I believe. I believe. I'd like to invite you to pray with me. A simple prayer. Will you? Let me know right now. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, a, at, at a, a monitor right behind me, and it's, it has a bunch of people, Carlito, Kelly, Smith, Luisa, Andrea, and there's more of you who are, who are, who are on Facebook. Uh, say, Pastor Danny, I want to pray with you today. Because I believe. I believe. God bless you, Rebecca and Marina and Monica. God bless you. But there's more of you who are out there. Go to your cell phone. Just type in, Pastor Danny, I want to pray with you. Some of you who are watching right now, you've never prayed a simple prayer like this. If that's you, why don't you type in really quick, say, Pastor, I've, I've never prayed a simple prayer like this, but I believe, and I want to agree with you. Why don't you bow your head and close your eyes with me. And pray with me. Jesus. I believe you are the Word of God. I believe that you are the King of the world. And I believe that you are the Savior for my soul. The one who offers me a new life in God. Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross so that when I place my trust in you, you will forgive me of all of my sin. All of my sin. I invite you into every area of my life. I give myself to you. Because I believe, not just with my mind, but I believe in my soul that you are God. The Savior and the resurrection for my life. I pray this simple prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. What I'd like for you to do now, uh, many of us uh, are preparing for communion. I've never done communion like this before, so I think this is new for me as it is for you. But man, this is good. I asked some of you or all of you online to, to prepare some bread and some juice. So that we collectively, as a family, can take communion and recognize that Jesus Christ is the one who offered his life and his body as a sacrifice for our sin and shed his blood 
for the forgiveness of our sin. I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Lift up your, the bread or the cracker. It's a symbol, okay? It's just a symbol for us to recognize what we're doing. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, and he said this, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord took some bread, and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces, and he said this. This is so beautiful. This is my body, which is given for you. You see that? He did this for you and me. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray over the bread. Father, we thank you that Jesus Christ was the perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice, the one who fulfilled the law, the one who, who, who ratified the law. He's the one who satisfied the sacrifice for all of my sin. So I will eat this bread to recognize that Jesus Christ is the true prophet, the king, and the only savior who died on a cross for all of my sin. Amen. Let's take the bread together. Hallelujah. Blessed God Almighty. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 25. Get your juice. It can be any kind of juice. <laughs> but the fact is that we have juice. Sorry, I just sense the presence of the Lord right now. Blessed Messiah. Thank you so much for the sacrifice you made on a cross. You became sin so that we would not be sin anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Verse 25. Jesus said this, in the same way he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. It's an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. Paul goes on to write, he says, For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, listen to me, we are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So let's drink our juice together, remembering that this is a symbol of the blood of Jesus, which is the new covenant between God and us. Father, we thank you for the blood that Jesus shed on the cross for us. If there's life in the blood, let's drink. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Listen to me. If you pray that simple prayer with me, I need to, for you to communicate with me. Go to our, our New Life app, and you can uh, communicate and 
through us and 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 and, and uh, press the uh, I think it's the welcome tab or the welcome button. That's how you're able to say, "Listen, Pastor Danny, this is who I am. This is how you can communicate with me." But I gave my life to Jesus, and I will send you a note, or we will call you at the same time. I'll let you know. We know who you are. We know. Let's communicate. Let's talk about the decision that you made. It's a very important decision. So right now, just right now, go to our new life app. Or communicate with us via Facebook or, uh, or YouTube. Let us know who you are. Let's talk. If you have any questions, please send me a note. We will be in touch with you very soon because you are are so important. You are so important. And what's happening in your life right now is important to us. And those of you, brothers and sisters, who are part of the church, let's continue to partner together in giving. Giving is an important aspect of worship and the ministry. You are called of God and uh, to partner together with the whole family to reach a dying world with the good news of Jesus Christ. So will you give? Thank you. I want to give you the benediction now. Now unto him who was able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God our, our Savior be honor, power, and dominion both now and forevermore. May the face of God shine upon you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ enable you. And may the presence of the Holy Spirit be upon you and with you and in you. That He may lead you into all truth that you may know Him and make Him known. I pronounce this blessing upon you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.